This is NDTV. And you are watching NDTV Prime. Larpuria Sattva, Trust, It's What We Build, presents The Realty Debate with Manisha Natarajan. We all know Delhi and the National Capital Region is choking on dangerously polluted air. And despite making it to headlines almost every day, there's little being done for it. Well, there's another danger, less clear and present, but not any less alarming. The danger of Delhi and all of India's cities choking on garbage and solid waste. The figures are so frightening that one wonders, what is everyone waiting for? And by everyone, I mean us, all of us, who seem oblivious to the fact that our cities and lakhs of rupees spent on buying expensive real estate are going to literally go to waste if we don't sit up and do something about it now. Welcome to the Realty Debate on India's garbage problems. Today we will, of course, identify the big problems and also try and get the solutions going. Joining me today, Shirish Sankhe, Director, McKenzie India, Manit Rastogi, Managing Partner, More for Genesis, Dr. Sudhir Krishna, former Urban Development Secretary, and Swati Singh Sambyal, Program Manager, Environmental Government Team, CSC. Thank you very much for joining me, all of you. And I'm going to, you know, quote a little bit from Dr. Ishar Aluwalia's three-part article published in Indian Express because it pretty much captures what's happening today. She writes that the garbage menace in urban India is not limited to what meets the eye. That is bulging community bins, rubbish piled on street corners, sometimes left for days in open spaces to rot and pollute, and garbage strewn over stormwater drains. Some cities have partially implemented door-to-door -door collection with the help of resident welfare associations and some have outsourced private agencies. More generally, the waste is dumped unsegregated into the community bins and transported over long distances. Finally, land up in landfills which are becoming landhills of rubbish and are leading to huge number of health problems. So I'm going to deep dive into my questions. First question to you, Mr. Sanke. Few people realize how close we are to being choked by our own garbage. Now, the Environment Ministry notified new waste management rules in April 2016 asking for waste segregation, but none of these rules are getting implemented. So, so what is it? I mean, why is there not enough action on ground? Yeah. So, this is the story of urban India, right? Whatever area you take, uh, there is not enough action, there is not enough money, there is not enough will. On garbage itself, uh, you know that as a country becomes richer, in fact, the per capita generation of garbage goes up. So the numbers you have, uh, have been quoted, which is to say there will be 180 million tons of garbage in India uh, in 2030, I think are grossly underreported. My Our own calculation says it will be somewhere between 250 to 300 million tons wow. annually, the garbage. So the, pro the problem is much, 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 much bigger. And it comes back to the municipal capacity and the municipal uh, funding that is plaguing urban India all over. So we should talk about how does the municipal capacity and funding get spent on it. But even today we are spending and collecting uh, only 60 to 70 percent. And only 19 percent of this uh, is treated, and less than 12 percent is segregated. So even the problem currently is much bigger, and is going to become much, much bigger going forward. Hmm. Mrs. Sudhir Krishna, what was the point of coming out with new norms when none of these rules can be implemented? There's no legal action to be taken. Other than Karnataka High Court, there's not a single High Court which has even turned around and said, you have to make it mandatory to segregate waste. Well, I think rules were required mm -hmm. and to that extent a road map has been laid. It is for the system, for the administration now to come forward and strengthen the municipalities, you know, empower them to handle the municipal garbage, city garbage in a meaningful manner, in a sustainable manner. Uh, today, unfortunately, the municipalities are kind of by, gradually becoming bigger and bigger bystanders in the whole uh, city administration and uh, it is now telling on the system now where well, Swachh Bharat mission is there all right mm -hmm. but Swachh Bharat mission and the municipality the whole labyrinth of procedures and so on 
it distances the municipalities from handling the uh, you know situation. Mm -hmm. So I would think that the rules were required. Rules have come in place. That is a, the right thing to have happened. Funds have come from Saksha Bharat Mission. That is also right. But the, what is missing is empowerment of municipalities, giving them the kind of uh, feeling that their city must be clean and then they should be given authority to and they have they are supposed to collect user charges also mm. and the processing technology and so on so i think that some but rethink none, none, none of it is happening i mean it, empowering it, the uh, municipal corporations we will come to that but but i mean let's look at the just the rules now they make it mandatory for local authorities to arrange for door to door collection of segregated solid waste distinguishing wet waste dry waste and hazardous waste so, Adi, my question to you is that in Delhi, rules were notified. MCD, we are all living in Delhi areas. Not once has, has MCD even issued a simple notice or an SMS saying, please start segregating your waste. There's a big fight between BJP and AAP when it comes to Delhi. All the time they're fighting over issues. Whether it's pollution, it's all a blame game. But after the rules... By the way, I mean, nobody in my colony where I live knows that there are any rules asking for ways to be segregated. So what is the point of rules? What is the point of saying a stage has been set? Set for what? Uh, of course, it's very disappointing because even the 2000 rules, MSW rules 2000, they mandated segregation and it didn't happen. So 16 years after, even the new what rules say... What do we say, mean by mandating? How I mean, will mandating is one? How do you make sure step by step is implemented? Exactly. Do you bring in the courts where courts, like in Karnataka, have said you have to make it happen? Yes. And if you don't make it happen, then there is punishment. So there has without to, that, how will it happen? Yeah. So there has to be a revision in the bylaws, hmm. and even the municipalities have to work actively in spreading awareness pro programs. As you said, after the rules have come, we haven't uh, got any guidelines or any framework in terms of how segregation shall be incentivized or why I as a household should, should segregate uh, my waste. What incentive will I get for doing that? So mm -hmm. unless and until you don't spread awareness and don't tell people that this is the incentive uh, through which, uh, you know, if you segregate, it, it'll, it'll help in something, make the environment better. So unless and until that will not happen, uh, it's just futile. Just getting a rule book will not help. Okay. Also, yeah. also so. Delhi has another issue. When you talk about municipal contacts, mm. uh, the contracts, they are pro collection and dumping waste in a landfill. Mm -hmm. All the contracts do not mandate that, uh, you know, you'll be incentivized on collection, treatment and processing of waste. So if you uh, go by the rule book, the mm -hmm. concept of tipping fee. Mm -hmm. So here you get tipping fee for collecting and dumping the waste. So if I as a contractor collect my waste from colony A to colony B and C and dump it to the landfill, I get some money for collecting that waste. But uh, there is no incentive for treatment and processing. So all of and us, all for as municipalities... I mean, the, the pickers themselves segregate because they end up making some money with exactly, recyclable exactly. products, but there's really not even a fee determined for those waste pickers, which allows for or encourages waste segregation. And this is where my question is, Manit. At household level, you need to start at household level. There is no question about waste segregation becoming a possibility if segregation does not happen at household level. What do you need? Do you need NGT? Do you need court? Do you need imprisonment? Do you need fine? Do you need awareness? What will get Indians to have some basic civic sense? Uh, you know, uh, Manisha, the, the, the point is very simple, okay? And, uh, you know, I've used that term environmental emergency. Now, the, you know, the fundamental issue is when it comes to water, waste, solid waste or otherwise uh, uh, sewage, uh, any of these uh, are air, pollution, livability, walkability, fundamental issues, okay, are being, uh, cannot be uh, done by enforcement by the government simply because they have miserably failed since independence, what has been there under the purview of the government? We've made acts, we've made rules. Every act and every rule is made with the intention of prosecution that if you don't do this, you will be punished. But has it led to anything? No. What we really need to do is start thinking about how we can go bottom up. How can we begin to teach our children from school, 
from their homes, from uh, their, within our cities. How can we implement projects locally? Stop looking at the government. I've given up on them. Okay, rules are great and everything is great, but what has it done for us? It's done nothing. I, I cannot breathe in my city today. Delhi is the most polluted city in the world. 7% of that or to 9% of that pollution is coming from these so-called landfills, which are not landfills. They're garbage dumps. And these are garbage dumps that are going up 15, 20 stories high. And all of Delhi is a garbage dump. The Nalas are a garbage dump. And these, and you've got instant fires, burning plastic, burning toxins, feeding this area. I mean, so what are we talking about? The only thing I really see that can happen here is that, yes, you know, citizens have to take this in their own hands. Segregate the waste at your own place. Aim for zero discharge. Construction sites, 50% of the waste comes from construction and demolition. Why can't our sites, why can't we change the entire mechanism of how we think about a city? Cities are by and large treated as instruments which consume and generate garbage and that garbage is left, whether it's sewage or solid waste. Why can't we think about it as a closed loop system? Construction waste, we've, we've, we've enforced on projects that we pretty much aim at zero discharge to landfill. Mm. If, if we can do that, where are those construction rules? Again, they will be implemented. But where is the education? Where is the skill building? So, you know, we are talking about a mega problem here. The only way that we are going to get out of this problem is if citizens begin to do this themselves. I agree. I completely agree. So why not have rules and why not have rules which have consequences? Mr. Sudhir Krishna, here's what I want to understand from you. In, in, we all knew before Diwali that Delhi is going to choke with crackers. Yet when PILs were actually uh, levy, I mean PILs went to Supreme Court, Supreme Court turned around and said, sorry, we can't ban, ban crackers because we can't implement it. You know, it's foolish to do that. But was that the way out? I mean, seriously, are we, are we not seeing these mounting problems? And if, you, if your country's highest court says that, look, I will not hurt religious sentiments and I will not ban crackers because it's not implementable. Chalo, that is one thing. What about waste? Why can't they say waste segregation, like Karnataka High Court has said, is mandatory? Let me is it. mandatory. There is no option out. In fact, I would put it another way. Mm -hmm. that we are laying rather too much emphasis on uh, collection and segregation. But to me, what is more important is that uh, processing, recycling and reuse and making the whole process but as... Krishna, as you will only recycle and reuse I'll, when I'll you come segregate. To that. I'll come to that. Okay. No, but in today's environment, we are only focusing or almost, you know, almost entire energy and publicity is focused on uh, collection point. Okay. Keep your house, keep your area clean. But after cleaning, where does it go and what happens to that? Once the whole thing is taken as a package from collection to processing as a single package and it is made into a financially viable proposition. Today, people are not sure whether they will make money except to collect and dump. There is some profitability in that. But processing is not a viable uh, solution. I mean, today as things are, because municipalities are not leaving user charges and uh, the and polluters are not being asked to pay according Absolutely. to, in, the, in proportion to the pollution they are, they are creating. So once these two things are done and recycled material uh, should pay for uh, certain, some part of the mm -hmm. process put together, once it is an economically viable proposition, then only the whole thing will work. Merely okay. by making laws and looking up to, you know, law enforcement agencies and courts to make the environment clean is not going to be sustainable in the long run. In occasional cases, from time to time, it may work. But to make it sustainable, we have to have five factors. One is the financial sustainability. The second is the managerial governance sustainability. Third is technological sustainability. Fourth is environmental sustainability. And lastly, emotional. We are starting with the last, you know. Emotional okay. part is very high. You know, we should keep the city clean, we should keep everything clean. It's okay, but if it is not viable, if governance-wise the systems are not working, if financially it is not a viable proposition, if we do not take, take environment as a whole, you know, my house is clean, my surrounding is clean, but beyond 20 kilometers I am dumping garbage, I am not bothered, I am helpless, that is not the way. So like that, you know, integrated approach okay. to, to, for a waste management so only. That it's not a single-pronged approach that, okay, segregate waste and everything will happen. Get that point and I completely agree with mm -hmm. you. I'm going to come to you and let's move on to some examples where things have actually happened right. Mr. Sanket, tell us what's happening. There are, I mean, are there cities, are there municipalities which have actually proven that this can be done? Yeah, so Manisha, just uh, one point. I think I agree with uh, Dr. Krishna that it's an end-to-end -end solution and any weak chain in the, solu in the solution of generation, segregation, collection, transport, treatment and storage 
anything that's go that goes bad, you will feel the pinch. Uh, maybe tomorrow, if segregation works, we'll be talking about treatment. So, therefore, it's quite important to uh, think end to end. Today, less than 5% of the money is spent on processing and disposal. 60 to 70 percent on collection and 20 to 30 percent on transportation. So the money spent is also quite lopsided. Mm -hmm. In terms of uh, uh, best practices, okay, uh, I personally don't give too much weightage to a single uh, society or a single gully doing something because unfortunately it's not sustainable. Mm -hmm. It's great headlines but not sustainable. But for example, what Pimpri Chinsword did, okay, in terms of uh, collection, uh, entire uh, eight. 8 uh, lakh households, right? Uh, West Picus uh, Workers Cooperative was formed. Mm -hmm. Each wo worker was given 100 to 150 households and 20 to 30 p uh, rupees per month were collected. And they also had rights on recyclable material. The segregation went to 70 to 80 percent. The collection went to 90 percent and still sustainable. There are lots of pockets of examples where things are working, but as Dr. Krishna said, you have to think end to end. And especially on treatment, there is not enough viability. I'll talk about it later. But okay. there are examples, but you do need to think end to end.